this is the title that I've chosen today for my talk, is Don't Go With The Wrong Flow. I really hope that there are some Queens of the Stone Age fans that could like deeply appreciate the title, <laughs> but still. Um, so the talk is going to be um, a little walkthrough, basically, um, and um, I would like to show you and to tell you, um, to give you a little bit of tips on how to basically build, hopefully build a good workflow, and also uh, a little overview about a couple of things, a couple of like mistakes that you should really, really avoid in doing so. So, before starting, I would like to like introduce a little bit myself, so who am I? Um, I'm Giulia Zamboni. I um, start, started my career back in 2013, so it's like more than 10 years now. Um, I started at Stormy Ticap as a producer. Uh, it's an Italian studio, and uh, our first release was Nero. It was like very exciting because it was the first Italian game to be selected to be part of the ID at Xbox program at that time. Uh, after a couple of other releases, I joined um, Gamera Interactive in 2015, and I uh, handled more or less more than like 15 uh, releases um, with them, um, different, very different genres, and um, included like Alalot, Champions of the Four Kingdoms, that's a like huge, very huge and very cool RPG, fantasy classic style, uh, that we released back in June 2022. Uh, in September, same year, I joined Supermassive Games, where I am right now, and I'm lead producer, so I'm handling basically um, the team, one of the team who is working on uh, an announced project, uh, part of the Dark Picture Ontology. Also, since 2019, I'm part of the, I'm a Women in Games ambassador that I'm very proud of, and I'm also a, one of the creators of Distance Awards and uh, Distance Connects conference. So, let's crack on on other stuff now that you know a little bit more of me. Um, little and brief um, summary of what's a producer, because you never know. So, um, a producer, so what's my job, basically what I do all the time, um, a producer is mainly, you know, a facilitator, uh, and our main goals as producer is basically to um, be the main point of contact within the team members, and between the dev team and the high ups, stakeholders, external, internal, executives, etc. So, as being the main point of contact, you should basically uh, make sure that other people's work is as easy as possible. So, faster, more efficient, I would love to say less annoying, but that's not uh, true <laughs> at all. So, uh, we do what we, what we can, basically. Um, we need to, you know, see what kind of issues, what kind of obstacles we could potentially face at some point and try to remove them uh, before we really face them. So, a producer, this is a very mainstream thing, but still true. So, a producer is also, you know, in charge of making sure that the project is on time, on budget, and possibly at a very high, or at least at the established and required uh, quality level. And last, but absolutely not least, um, a producer need to be totally in love, not with the project, not with the product, but with the release of the product itself. There's a huge difference between the two things, as you can imagine. So, um, what is this talk about? Um, we are going to see a couple of reasons why um, workflows and documented workflows are so important in game production. And uh, I will try to walk you through uh, simple, what I think and I hope are going to be, simple steps to be able to create a workflow from, from scratch. Plus, plus, okay. Um, plus, we will try to see how to approach those situations where you find yourself uh, at a new company or working with a new team, and there are pre-existing workflows that could be good ones, but could also be, you know, 
not so good ones. And finally, we will see how make a good workflow a successful one, or at least how oh, should be. So I love really, really definitions. So I will start with one. Uh, it's from Collins Dictionary. So it's literally the definition of go with the flow. And as you can read, um, if you go with the flow, you let things happen or let other people tell you what to do rather than trying to control what happened yourself. And the, first, the very first example is like literally, there's nothing I can do about the problem, so you know, I might as well go with the flow. And in total fairness, I do like this approach very much for your like, personal life or whatever, it's like very cool, very zen, but I definitely won't suggest ever to use the same approach um, about like production, I would say in every field, but game production for sure. So, I would have chosen the other microphone. Uh, sorry, so why it is so important to establish a flow, first of all? Um, there are different reasons, of course, to do that, you know. So one of the reasons is absolutely the extreme um, valuable, extreme value, sorry, that having a documented workflow, a documented template for all the things you are basically doing to develop your game, you know. Uh, the extreme value, when it's up to um, welcome a new member of the team, it could be, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if it's like a very senior, the most senior member of your current company or if like an, an external newcomer or a junior profile. It's gonna be so, so easier for both parties basically to have something to show them and to, you know, walk them through to say, okay, this is how we do things, you know, um, to make them comfortable and to make it easier for them to understand what they are going to face. Secondly, having documented workflows, it's definitely crucial when it's up to, you know, learn from your experiences. And with experiences, I of course means mistakes, because basically mistakes are, you know, the best teachers. So it's really, really hard. It sounds automatic, but it's not. And it's really, really hard when you have to, after like, you know, um, two, three, four years, five years long development cycle, you have to collect all the data to see what has gone wrong, to, you know, create postmortems, to see what we could have improved, or even better, hopefully, what did we improve to, you know, to solve this issue, to make this uh, step um, faster, to improve the entire um, working cycle, to do that feature working and look better. So if you do have something already put down on paper, it will be way easier, as I said, to just, you know, not remove, not erase, not delete, but just put a big red cross on something and add a note saying, well, we are not doing this anymore because reason, and this is the new approach because we have seen like better results. Easy, clean, and re really, really vital for any you know, upcoming project. And finally, another huge time saver is basically having documented workflows when you are going to approach a new game, a new project, that could potentially be part of a series, part of an anthology, you know, a sequel of another game, or just a game that you are trying to make using, you know, making the best use of whatever you had done with your previous project. So literally, making something, not trying to reinvent the wheel, so relying or being able to rely on what you have learned and what you have done in the past is like, Fantastic. It's really, really not, not, not only time saver, it's also your, you know, mental health saver kind of thing. But as I said, definition, so Oxford languages, what's, what's, what's a workflow? I mean, um, a workflow is the sequence of industrial, administrative or other processes through which a piece of work passes from initiation to completion. I love completion. What a beautiful word. Um, so this is one possible, of course, definition of workflow. And I think it's like pretty on point. So how to build 
that workflow? How can we do? How can we approach? You know? um, first of all, of course, identify your goals. That sounds like really easy, but it is not. Still, it helps a lot if you start literally listing them down, let's just do, make a list as a grocery list, same, same thing. So your goals and together with your goals, your resources. Resources you think you will need or resources that you have and you know that you need to, you know, uh, um, that you need to make them work somehow. So you have just these resources to so try to balance a little bit all these things. Once you've done that, other lists list the tasks, so list basically all the actions that you think you will need to um, complete to achieve your goals. That's also something that sounds like really easy, uh, but it is not. Of course, in this case, I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, real tasks like tickets, Jira tickets or, you know, Asana tickets or like to-dos kind of things. It's not the phase where you are breaking down all your big, you know, big features or big mechanics or whatever, big piece of work. It's literally a list of the main actions that you will need to achieve your final goal. So very, very basic. It could be very, very, very uh, high level. Third step, absolutely vital. Assign roles. Define who is going to do what and when at which conditions. Because if you don't assign roles, if you don't put people in a position where they can be, you know, responsible for, for the work in the good ways, also in the bad ways, but in the good ways, um, primarily, um, you are going to have like a very, very messy situation where you maybe have done, a, have created like the most beautiful workflow, but nobody is able to just follow it because nobody knows when should I, should I do that? Should uh, everyone else do that? Oh, I thought the other person is going to do that, you know? So, definitely, definitely vital. Then visualize, visualization. So visualize the process. So create a very, very simple diagram. You will see after, at the end of the presentation, you will see a true piece of art that I myself created like in five minutes with paint um, to make this concept really, really clear for you. So visualize, uh, visualization is really important, not just for yeah, like yourself, basically, you are the one creating the flow and you know, putting things in, 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 a, uh, in a visual form could help you understand a lot, could help you uh, finding issues you know, that are already there and it can be like removed before even starting with a new flow. And it's also very useful to explain at some point how your workflow should work, not only to your teams, to your devs, but also to someone who usually stays above you, like your boss, stakeholders, again, you know, publisher, executives, whoever, whoever at some point will probably need to be convinced about the benefic how beneficial this new workflow will be. So a very good, again, clean, not necessarily beautiful, uh, visual diagram will be definitely, definitely useful. Then, I will go with point five and point six, because I find these two points pretty interchangeable, in the sense that, so of course, to, you know, to be able to say, okay, this workflow, it's cool, it works, let's move on with it, you need to test it. At the same time, to test it, you need to, you know, train your team to be able to use the workflow. But training a team to use a new workflow um, needs, it's a thing that you need to, to do pretty, pretty in, the proper, in a proper way. So they need to understand the workflow pretty well. They need to understand the, 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 the benefits of the use of the workflow. They need to embrace totally the new workflow. Because basically, a workflow is more than, it's a, a, a mix of, uh, a series of rules somehow, guidelines, but basically, workflows are tools, are tools, because if you do have a team who knows how to use good workflows, they can do pretty 
anything in total autonomy, and that's the best thing you could hope for when it's up to your team, making, literally, making people, every team member, able to do their own work, you know, without, like, the need of, like, checking or asking every 30 seconds. And at the same time, having all the team members that are working properly toward the same goal, right? So, when you started to train, when you start to train your team, again, that needs, that needs effort from your side, from their side, and time, especially. And one of the worst things ever, it's literally to go to someone that you have just, you know, that have been just teached um, to, to, uh, to do something in a new kind of way and say to them, ah, you know what, stop, 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 like remove, delete, abort mission, you know. Um, this is no more the workflow we are going to use because, because you have never tested properly prior to that. And so they found themselves in the middle of like learning something new that again needs like effort, need work, need attention, etc. And so they will start to be like super confused as like it's pretty normal. And this will create like, you know, some precedent um, about changing workflows. So they will, they will be no more so keen to, to, to embrace new workflows if this is how everything is going to end, you know? So, so the ideal thing, if you can do that, is literally to test the workflow in a small, like, safe kind of environment. So instead of, like, going to all your departments, all the involved departments, you know, and start saying, okay, this is a new workflow, this is how we are going to do things from now on, just bring leads, or just bring, like, one designer, one programmer, one concept artist, whoever you need, just like one person, basically, who you think do, does have the skills that are needed for, you know, to, to, to move on with this workflow, and try to make it work with a small, literally, test. It's a test of a test, basically. And then, if the workflow seems to be, you know, pretty cool, seems to work, seems to be useful, seems to um, guarantee yourself all the things that you were trying to achieve, then you can go to the entire departments, all the leads, all the company, <laughs> whoever you want, and present your workflow and say, okay, we have tested it and it seems to work pretty good. Or maybe you will find out that improvements are needed, you know, changes are needed, like you were doing everything wrong, um, and you will gain some time, basically, without create the biggest confusion ever in your, in your, within your team. So, once you do have your workflow and you're happy with it, and it really works, then you can definitely train people. And then, deploy the new workflow. So you can start, definitely, you know, start using uh, the new workflow, but that's, that's not it. I mean, uh, your job is not finished, of course. So, to move on in the right way, you need to always track your workflow. So, from time to time, that doesn't mean once in every, like, once a, a year, more likely once a week or something, just go and see and check if everything is basically on track. If the workflow is really effective, if, if the workflow is still effective, because sometimes, you know, things change very fast, requirements change, deadlines change, a lot of things change, technical issues came up and stuff. So, as any kind of plan, even a workflow document need to be up to date, need to be, it's a living document, you know? So you need to take care of it, basically, to maintain the value that he's bringing to your team. Another, okay, this is not properly a definition. This is a sentence from uh, Theresa O'Fowler. Uh, she's like a writer and she has, she's like pretty famous because she writes um, um, a book about Zelda, not Zelda, that Zelda, unfortunately, but like Zelda Fitzgerald, so wife to Francis Scott Fitzgerald, the author of The Great Gatsby. Still, she said something that's like, it's a truth, you know? Uh, some rules are nothing but old habits that people are afraid to change. So this is one of the, I would say, most common 
obstacle that you could find on your path. So, and this brings us to how to approach a pre-existing flow. So, one of the most common traps that I call like, we have always done like this trap. So, habits and workflows that are so established and are perceived as good habits because we are never change it. I mean, we are used to do like this, right? So, it should work. It should be the best result possible because, because yes, and that's not always true, of course. So, still, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting you to try to disrupt every workflow, every, you know, rules, every guideline of every company or team you will ever work for, because that's not a thing. What I'm saying is, every time you find a pre-existing workflow, just do your research, do your investigations, talk with people, collect data, look for data connected with the workflow. What results have been achieved with this workflow? What issues have been encountered? What issues have been encountered and maybe ever solved? So they are still there. Um, so look at the you know, past project that this workflow has been used to, to create it. And see, do your math, talk again, talk a lot with people. And if it's the case, so if you, in, in all honesty, if you really think that there is a better way to do, you know, this um, series of action, to, to improve this workflow, to change, just fight against the current workflow. That even doesn't mean just fight saying, oh, well, this workflow is bad. This workflow doesn't work. Oh, what a shame. You need to propose something. So you need to be able to show that you have understood how the workflow works. You have understood and you have, you know, highlighted all the bad steps of the workflow, all the issues, all the problems. And you have found a new proposal, at least. You propose a new way to, uh, to make it more efficient. And if you do have your visual diagram, it will be way easier to explain this to people. But still. Success is a team effort. This is also a very mainstream kind of sentence, but it is true because people like team are made, teams are made of people. So that's definitely, um, absolutely true. So what does make a workflow successful? Guess what? People, first of all, and that's why it's absolutely crucial to have people who do understand the flows, you know, the workflows, the, the, the reasons behind it. So a workflow is just like a series of actions, right? Steps, things that need to be done, usually in a specific order and in a certain way. But if you have a team who does understand workflows and how they work and why they are beneficial, you will have like a happier team and a way more efficient team. And then communication, another very mainstream kind of thing. Communication is key. Communication is really key. The, the, the real truth that nobody used to say is that communication needs a lot of effort. It's not just like having a chat, you know, or talking to your colleague. It's literally a task. It's something that someone needs to take care of constantly. And again, if you want to have all your team on board, all your team members on board, you need to be sure that you can communicate how the workflow is and why and, you know, all the benefits, again, very, very well. So, communication is really key and people is also really key to success. And then, practical examples. So, be ready for my beautiful... It's literally the ugliest diagram ever, as you can, like, confirm. Um, and I literally did it in like three minutes in paint, like three hours before this talk. Um, but still, I found it, and I would found it really useful for the specific purpose, you know? So it's literally, you know, showing the name of the steps, the name of the action, arrows, and 
production team, production team, dev team, who is going to basically be the one who, you know, will kind of do the thing. So I put this together just because uh, in one of my like past um, um, products, past projects, uh, I, did, I did have like a um, couple of assistant producers um, and I've asked them to put together and put down to paper um, a, vi a visual diagram of like a new workflow that we were about to implement and to deploy and to, and to use. And I literally thought they would have like made it in like 30 minutes or something. I literally like used like five minutes, three minutes, something. Um, and after like three hours, nothing has been, you know, delivered. So I kindly check like, hey guys, like everything okay? Do you have like some, some issues, some doubts about like the workflow, etc." And they were like, no, well, we are not super sure about, you know, the colors of things. I was like, I don't, I mean, I don't care about colors. I just want these like rectangles with like written like infos, keywords and stuff and arrows and, and that's it. And so basically I found out that they were struggling trying to use a lot of like different color nuances and color patterns and you know to, to fill the rectangles, the cells that it was it was like a total waste of time because nobody is going to have a look at this, you know? So just make it efficient, just definitely make it efficient. So don't care about how beautiful your diagram is. If you want, when you will have like some spare time, I can never, um, you can use all this non-time that you will have to make your <laughs> diagram, you know, the most beautiful one. But it's not, it's not a requirement, it's definitely not needed. Um, so that's it. Um, I hope I like, I gave you some, I've given you some cool, advices, suggestions, or like point of view, at least. Um, these are my contacts, of course, if you want like to connect on LinkedIn or whatever. And that's it. Don't go with the wrong flow. Thank you so much, Julia. Great Thank talk. Uh, we have time for one question. Do we have a one question? Oh, we have... Um, Yeah, uh, I just wanted to see, to see if you could expand a little bit on how you test the flow a little bit with your team, just uh, that flow that you you are producing or creating. How I test it? I literally just follow all the actions in order. So I really um, put in place a real test, like literally, let's do this, then this, then this, then this, then this, and see how things are working. So if it's up to, uh, I don't know, let's create, let's create a workflow for, you know, um, game, um, a, a design for, you know, a level. So let's create, okay, concert art. I, I will like literally make it really, really uh, short. So it's not like this, but uh, let's, let's put it like this, concept. Let's make a concept following, I don't know, three, a three lines guideline, you know, given by lead designer or uh, executives or whoever. Go. When it's, when it's done, um, move on with designer. So pass on to designers and let's, um, let's give designers an X amount of time because of course, you know, it, when, you, when you're working on a new workflow, it's not just about like actions at all, it's like actions, timings, evaluations and stuff. So usually um, an improved workflow is a, a workflow that make you save some time, you know? Um, so concept, design, let's put together like, I don't know, a very rough 2D map for, you know, a level design kind of thing. Um, then move on with I don't know, a very, very brief, very, very, uh, sorry, rough uh, kind of 3D block out. Again, I'm skipping a lot of stuff, but still. Um, and see, at the end, let's, um, let's go for, uh, let's go with a review. 
from you know, the executives, for example, and see what they think, and see if at some point the review will show that whoever is reviewing your work is finding issues that are literally issues that originate from the very beginning of your workflow, so from the concept, for example, you will, you will see, you will understand, okay, maybe there is something wrong in how we give guidelines to concept artists, you know? So it's not a matter of like how we move on from concept to uh, level design to block out. It's literally something that is, it could be, you know, uh, solved at the origin of everything. Or it could be that, you know, well, the, the 3D blockout is not good because, you know, sizes, proportions are not good enough. So you can say, well, we can improve on that side. So let's talk with the, you know, uh, 3D artist or designer or whoever has put together the 3D blockout and see, do you think you were missing or lacking information? You know, what caused basically this, like, um, these issues? Not enough time, not enough information, bad, I don't know, bad 2D map from, you know, the, the 2D uh, paper design. What are the causes? And, and so on. So another, in that sense, another important thing is to be um, aware of all the review steps that you put into your workflow. Because reviews, of course, are really important, but if you put into too many reviews, there, these, these reviews will be like the biggest bottlenecks of your entire workflow, and that will, will block absolutely all the, all the work and will kind of remove all the flexibility that you need to have at some point anyway, you know? It's not like you can put into a workflow every single tiny action because unless you are going to be stuck into your own into your own workflow that's another risk that you should you know avoid so it's literally testing it's literally doing what we are asking people to do and see if they could do it if they have enough enough information if the results are the ones that we are expecting basically